All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar. We're going to get started because I think it's right about 12 o'clock. All right, um, this webinar is entitled, Where Do I Take It? E-Waste and Other Hazardous Material. It is the ninth installment in our Environmental Matters webinar series. The Environmental Matters webinar series began in February and will run all the way through throughout 2013. Um, we'll have about two webinars per month. If you would like to watch any of the previous webinars, they're all archived on our website. You can see them at www.ci.superior.wi.us slash webinar. Um, and for every live webinar you attend between now and the end of November 2013, you will be registered to win a compost bin from the City of Superior. So for each one you attend, you'll get one entry into the drawing. Um, all right, so let's get started. Okay. All right, so let's begin. Um, first of all, we'll we'll talk about hazardous waste. So, what is hazardous waste? Hazardous waste, as defined by the EPA, is any waste that could harm you or harm the environment. Um, it's not necessarily something that is just coming from industrial or commercial facilities. It's not just things from, from factories, but it can be those as well. A lot of the items found in your house can be hazardous. Um, some of these include paint, cleaning supplies, oil, batteries, things like that. Some things that you don't really think about as, as dangerous, like they still can be. Um, so. I pulled this from the WLSSD website, this, if I can get to it, sorry, um, right here, this shows what some different household hazardous wastes are. Um, and WLSSD has a good thing on their website where they say it well. It says flammable, toxic, corrosive, poison, poison, caution, those are all kind of hints that what you're looking at could be hazardous. So. Um, you can take a look at this chart on their website, um, and it shows information about how you would dispose things and what you can put in the trash and what you can't put in the trash, um, and also information about um, non-toxic cleaning so that you wouldn't even have to deal with these things to begin with. So that's pretty neat. Um, next, what is e-waste? So that, that was just a quick overview of what hazardous waste is, but what is e-waste? E-waste is electronic waste, and it includes all kinds of electronics, and you know, there are tons and tons of different sorts of electronics, so all of those are known as e-waste together. So it's a really big concern, and the reason that it's such a big concern is because the e-waste stream is growing two to three times faster than any other type of waste. So you might think we're throwing away lots of paper or, you know, plastic containers, but e-waste is growing more than anything else. Um, about 20 to 50 million tons of e-waste are generated per year, and in 2000 alone, sorry about that, 4.6 million tons of e-waste were generated in the United States. And that's in 2000, and now we have so many more electronics and things like that on the market than we did 13 years ago. So you can only imagine how many ton millions of tons are in landfills now. Um, only about 15% of electronics are recycled. So a really big problem with electronics is that they're designed for the dump. Um, this means that they're hard to upgrade, easy to replace, and impractical to repair. So hard to upgrade, you may have noticed in the past with one computer, a program that you used on your old computer wouldn't work, so you had to get something totally different to fit the new computer. Um, they're easy to replace. New purchases are incentivized. I don't know about you, but my cell phone contract is up every two years, and they give you a free phone or a very cheap phone every two years. So it's really easy to replace things even if they're not even broken. Um, also, every time there's a new gadget out, they try and get people to buy that new thing even if you already have a, you know, an old version of it that works perfectly well. So, um, oh, and the last thing 
they're impractical to repair. A lot of products are not repairable or they're very expensive to repair. So, for example, you could buy a DVD player for anywhere, you know, beginning around like 10 to $15 at Target or Walmart. And replacing or repairing a DVD player, rather, could cost you up to like $50. So what are you going to do? Are you going to repair it for 50 or are you going to replace it for 10 to 15 You're probably going to just replace it. So they're very difficult to repair. Um, another thing, some companies will actually glue the batteries into electronics, so they're very difficult to repair even if you do decide to go that route. Um, and this is a big, big problem because electronics can be made of over 1,000 different materials and many of them are hazardous. So the fact that all of these things are working together to get us to throw them away and get rid of our electronics so that we buy more electronics is a really big problem because of what's in them. Um, another issue with e-waste is that a lot of e-waste that is considered to be recycled is actually sent abroad to developing countries to be broken down. So that's another sort of ethical issue along with disposing of electronics. So why are hazardous waste and e-waste an environmental concern? You know, we don't worry about putting computers in our offices and things like that. But both e-waste and hazardous waste have chemicals or substances that are harmful to human health or the environment inside of them. So hazardous waste is a little more obvious if you have, you know, a battery and it's got battery acid in it. You know that's harmful. But e-waste, you know, you see just a plastic a plastic edge of your computer screen, but you don't really know what's in it. So hazardous waste where there's a bottle of stuff that you know, okay, if this touches my skin, I'm in trouble, but a computer seems fairly harmless. Um, but if this waste is put in the regular trash that goes to the landfill, the chemicals from the e-waste could leach into the groundwater, and the same goes for hazardous waste. So they could, you know, come out of the out of the product and end up in the water eventually, which is really bad. Um, so especially if they're, you know, crushed or compacted or something like that and they break open, then those chemicals can very easily get out. Uh, if they're incinerated, they could cause air pollution and toxic ash, which could also pollute the water because it would fall onto the land, into the soil, and as water went through the soil, it would pollute it or it could fall directly into the water. So we really don't want these things in landfills, and actually their uh, electronics are banned from landfills in Wisconsin, and the Superior Landfill also does not take household hazardous waste, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So why are e-waste and hazardous waste a health concern? Hazardous waste, for obvious reasons, a lot of times it will have the chemicals listed right on there um, and what they'll, what they'll do when you see those warning labels that say caution, um, poison, things like that. E-waste is a little more tricky again. Um, so for example, with TVs, old tube TVs contain up to five pounds of lead. Newer flat panel TVs have less lead in them, but they do have mercury lamps. Um, so lead can cause developmental issues and brain damage. Mercury can cause disabilities. Uh, computer and printer, printer cables and wires have PVC. Um, lining the wires. And when PVC is heated or burnt, it forms something called dioxin. And dioxin is a persistent organic pollutant, which means that is very resistant to degradation. So when it's in the environment, it doesn't break down easily and it persists for a very long time. Um, and dioxins can cause cancer and reproductive issues and developmental problems. A lot of different problems. Dioxins are very, very, very toxic. Um, the last thing, brominated flame retardants, or BFRs. BFRs stop, stop electronics from catching on fire. And BFRs are in a lot of things besides just electronics. They're also in couches and mattresses, you know, different things like that. Um, the most common kind of brominated flame re retardant is polybrominated diphenyl ethers, or PBDEs. Um, the US EPA has banned some some, or the manufacture and import of some BFRs in 2004, um, 
but it it can stay in the environment for a long time and they're still in things like electronics and you might think it's fine tied up in the electronics and you know once it's recycled then we'll deal with it then but it can accumulate in household dust as well so BFRs can be can be dangerous um, and they cause hormone disruption brain damage and cancer and one thing about BFRs is they can be found in the blood of lots of people on earth um, and also in breast milk the average United States level in breast milk of BFRs is 75 times what it is in European breast milk so um, the European Union actually has regulated them more strongly in the past than the US EPA so that's why so all of these things are kind of scary and dangerous um, which is why we need to be really careful with what we do with our e-waste and our hazardous waste so how should we dispose of them? As I said, the Superior Landfill does not accept hazardous waste. Uh, Wisconsin also ba banned e-waste from landfills in 2010. Um, and they also had a law passed that makes electronics man manufacturers sponsor take-back programs so that more electronics are recycled. And since that ban, nearly 100 million pounds of e-waste have been recycled. Um, in July 2011 to June 2012 alone, 6.8 pounds of electronics per person were recycled. So that's pretty great. Um, it'd be better if we didn't have as many going into landfills and if they would last longer and you know, be easier to repair, but it's good to have them recycled anyway. Um, and superior residents can also take hazardous waste to WLSSD. And one more thing about electronics. Um, there are certain charities that will take working devices. Some stores will also take them back for a fee. For example, I believe Best Buy will take back electronics. Um, certain manufacturers will even take back the electronics. So Apple is a good example of this. If you send in your old electronics to Apple, they will take them back and they'll even give you a gift card for any remaining value um, that in your electronics. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the Superior Wastewater Treatment Plant, where we here at ESD are based, we take mercury-containing devices. Um, we also have a call-to-recycle box, and I'll show you quick what a call-to-recycle box is, if I can open this up. So this website here just shows you the call-to-recycle locations in Superior, and for some reason right now it's zoomed pretty far out. So. You can't really see it. So that just shows the different locations in Superior where you can take the things for call to recycle. And they accept rechargeable batteries. And I believe sometimes cell phones. So you can look at this map and see what places do accept. So we'll go back to this. Um, so Superior residents, as I said, can take hazardous waste to WLSSD. So when you do that, um, WLSSD has something called the Product Reuse Center. So any safe, usable products that are considered household hazardous waste that you take to WLSSD, they will have them available for free for other people to use. So if you have some paint that you used on a product or a project and you don't need it anymore, you can take it to WLSSD and they will make it available to someone else. So if they need that same color paint for something, they can take it. Um, and you can do the same. And actually, they even have a contest for a gift card if you take a picture and show how you're using the thing that you got from the Household Hazardous Waste um, Product Reuse Center. So it's pretty cool. There are some incentives to bring things there. And um, you can maybe find something else that you need while you're there for free. So it's a good incentive to, to take that stuff and dispose of it properly. So where can you go in Superior for e-waste? Like I said before, um, sometimes manufacturers and stores will take them back, but there are also some other businesses in Superior that will take those things. So AA Roloff, Belcom Appliance, TLK Industries. The Superior landfill will, but you can't just you know put it in your regular trash. It has to be done separately, and you can see their website for more information, and that's just off of the Main City website. Uh, waste management and also afterlife electronics graveyard. So where do you dispose of other items? 
So down here on this picture that I'll show you up closer in a, in a bit, you will be able to see our disposal guide for the City of Superior. You can find it at our, the city website slash disposal guide or at our stormwater block. Or you could give us a call at 715-394-0392 extension 1018 or 1041 and we can talk to you about these things as well and maybe give you a copy of the disposal guide if you'd like it. So here's the disposal guide and we just have um, different categories of things and where you can take them. So you can see, for example, um, household batteries, AA roll-off, Belcom Appliance, TLK Industries, and WLSSD. And although it's not in Superior, we did include WLSSD because they do take so many things, including household hazardous waste. So um, thermometers, you could bring those to WLSSD or here to Environmental Services Division at the Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, so this is just kind of a handy guide, and like I said, you can check our website or our blog to see this. So the last thing I want to talk about before we go into some questions, if anyone has any, is the Douglas County Clean Sweep. This is a yearly event that's held every June. Um, this year it's June 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the fairgrounds in Superior and they will be accepting medication, appliances, e-waste, and household hazardous waste, and some fees may apply. And you can see Douglas County's website or contact Mary Clune over at Douglas County Recycling for more information. So it doesn't look like we have any questions, so um, we will talk about our upcoming webinars. So thank you so much for attending. Our upcoming webinars include um, we had on June 25th Most Wanted Aquatic Invasive Species with Carrie Sanda, the Douglas County AIS coordinator. Unfortunately, that date does not work for Carrie anymore, so we will be rescheduling that one. On July 9th, we have a Lake Superior Day webinar with Lisa Radke. We will be talking about the activities that are happening in the area for Lake Superior Day, which is, I believe, July 20th or 21st. Um, it's like the third Sunday in July. Um, and so she'll be talking about the Superior Binational Forum and, you know, what Lake Superior Day is, and then we'll cover what's happening here for it. Uh, July 23rd, Household Hints on Saving Water. So we have a few listed here, but there will always be more webinars throughout 2013. As I said, we're trying to do two webinars per month, and you can view any archived webinars on our website. Um, and for every webinar you attend, including today's, you will be registered in a drawing to win a compost bin. So for more information, you can check us out on our website, www.ci.superior.wi.us or on Facebook, um, we're City of Superior ESD, or on Twitter, also City of Superior ESD. Thank you so much for attending, and we hope to see you at our next webinar.